All right, guys. Let's try some. Uh, let's try another tactical walkthrough on Chess.com Puzzle Rush. Let's see what we got here. Looks like a hanging piece. And it looks like counting. And it looks like making one. And it looks like another main one. And what do we got here? Looks like a fork on king and queen. We'll grab the queen. Um, let's see. Looks like a main two. Okay, I see a pin here. So this looks like a pin fork combination. We're starting to get into some some more interesting ideas. Pawns pinned. So the royal fork works. Alright, what do we got here? As strange as this sounds, it looks like a main two here with d4 check and then this diagonal. The whole diagonal can be covered with that bishop. Good. This looks like a really, really complicated position for for a 500 problem. This is this is weird. I see this pin on f7, which has definitely got to play into this. Normally we want to hold on to that pin and exploit it, but there's really no way for us to take advantage of that. Uh, so I almost think we've got to take with the bishop, which seems counterintuitive because we're down uh, we're down a piece in this position. And so if we sacrifice another piece, we'll get the piece back here. So we've won a pawn. But then the critical thing I think is king goes to e6. I don't mind if the king goes to f6 because that allows me to get this knight in with a tempo. And then I think I can really start to constrict on the black king. But if he goes to e6, what's the follow-up? Where's the, where's the attack? Where do we win material? That's really, really, really tough to see. And I think I'm going to just play this because I think it's the only move I can see in this position. Okay, we'll grab the knight. And they didn't even... That, that to me is a bad problem because uh, the follow-up there is very, very complicated. How does white win from that position if the king goes to e6? There needs to be more on that problem. But, all right, what do we got here? All right, I'm starting to get really suspicious of these, these ratings for these problems. These seem like they're much more complicated than five or 600 rated problems. When you look at this position, this is a great reason to study tactics because black is absolutely getting crushed. The position is terrible. Black has been caught with an uncastled king with an attack in the center. And if you told me black was winning in this position, I have to take and look twice. There has to be some tactic available that weight is overlooked. And it looks like we have this rook check, but what's the follow-up? This rook check forces the king to g2. And now this bishop covers h2. So if we check here, bishop takes. So this is a possibility. Queen can take defended by the knight, and the king comes back. And now our knight's hanging. But we do have queen. This is really unclear. Oh, oh, the king has to go here, and that's why we have queen h3, check, defending the knight. And remember, this bishop is gone now. This king ends up going, uh, well, he's going right there. That's the only legal move. So if the king is on f4, following up with a, with a skewer and winning the queen, that is way more than a 600 rated problem. I almost feel like that's too complicated. Am I overthinking it? It's the only thing I can see, other than maybe trying to defend against this attack first. But uh, I think I think if we do that, we're there's just too much coming down on us. Yeah, okay. And then, like I said, I think the only follow-up is, is uh, the rook, which 
seems counterintuitive, uh, but I think that works. Queen takes, and that problem ended way too soon. Chess.com has got to get those problems out of this problem set because that's much more complicated. You need more moves to prove that you really know the tactic behind that position. That's crazy. All right, this is much more the type of problem that you expect to see at this 600 rated level. Uh, hopefully you recognize this one. This one's just simply a pin. Let's pin the queen to the king, and we're going to win it. Okay, what do we got here? All right, this problem looks like a mate threat. We can make a move that threatens mate, that forces white to react in a fashion that is going to cause them to lose material. And that mate threat comes with <coughs> knight to g4 with threatening mate on h2. And if, if white pushes the pawn so the queen defends, then we have this fork on knight and king, and the king has nowhere to go. So. I think Rook is blocking, and if Rook blocks, then H2 mate is on its way, and it, it's really ugly. So I think if we play knight to g4, the queen is going to have to take the knight. And, yep, she did. All right, what do we got here? This looks like an advanced pro pawn problem. We've got a pawn about to promote. White has a pawn about to promote. Um, but uh, we can take this rook with a check, which prevents promotion. And then we've attracted, so this is an attraction um, tactic. Uh, you, on chess.com, they call it a uh, decoy slash deflection uh, to try to decoy the king onto this square, where now when we promote, if we promote to a queen, and we promote with a check, and then we can maneuver around and clean up this pawn when we're done. So let's try that. And we promote with a check. Good. Here I think we're winning a bishop and a pawn. Uh, queen has come up to uh, defend the mating square. We would have been checkmating white right there. So, But this rook can take bishop with a check. And if pawn takes, queen takes with a check. And we own this diagonal. So the king steps over there. And we can grab the rook with a check. And mate, actually, because our pawn has this square covered. So this looks this looks really nice. And we'll grab that. Nice. Alright, this one looks like an X-ray, an excellent tactic if you haven't if you haven't learned it. Um, our rook protects this F1 square. So if we play a queen check here, only way out of that check is for the rook to take, and our rook is covering it mate. Here I don't know how black got into this mess. This is a nice Morphe style, opera style mate. Hopefully you see it. Bishop and queen working together. Uh, there's a lot to distract you here. This this bishop is pinned, which is interesting, but you know the fact that the dark square bishop bones this diagonal and the queen can mate right there is even more important. All right, this is a very instructive position. Black is actually in a bit of trouble here, uh, even though you've got this nice pawn structure. But uh, this is a great example of why I say, if you're playing black, never play an early f6 unless you've got a really good reason, because your king gets opened on this diagonal. So hopefully you see this queen check here. And the thing is, if the king comes down, uh, the queen comes in with a check here, driving the king here, and it almost looks like he's going to escape. and continue this thread on our knight but if we play here I think if you play knight c4 check and pawn takes then rook comes over and you have this shish kebab of bishop king and queen all on the same file and our queen is right in uh in black's territory that would be really bad and that's why I think if you play queen h5 check this is usually what's going to happen tries to block with the pawn, the g-pawn, but this is very important. There's a pin here. In knight takes g6, that pawn, that h7 pawn, is pinned, and if he takes, queen takes the rook. If he doesn't take, then he set himself up for a really dangerous discovered attack. When the knight moves, knight can take the rook with a check. So this is just really, really bad for black. 
never play an early f6 when you're playing black unless you absolutely have to. So let's see what happens. Yep, there we go. And that, that pawn is mine, and that rook is mine. Here I think we've got a distraction, and this is a tactic you should be familiar with. Um, uh, I only see one piece defending this knight, this bishop, and if I push this pawn to e5, there's nowhere, nowhere for the bishop to remain that continues to defend the knight. So when bishop backs off, and the bishop's almost trapped, and the bishop backs off, uh, rook can grab that knight. There we go. Nice. All right, careful here. That If that move didn't look suspicious to you, then you should uh, take another look at it. Um, this is, of course, a trap. If uh, pawn takes, then knight takes with a royal fork. So we're not going to allow that. Black thinks he's being really sneaky here, but he's overlooked that. We have a fork. There's a fork on the board. Hopefully you can find it. Queen a4, check, and also threatens the loose knight. Don't forget to watch for those loose pieces. And We'll bag that knight. Oh. You know. Here if we grab the bishop, uh, if if there was a rook here that could pin our queen to the king, that would be bad, but it's the queen, and I think or I think we're gonna be fine. Yep. Alright, here's another dangerous position. Uh, black's got uh, you know this pawn here. It looks like we have more attackers. Uh, on it, and but if knight takes, then bishop comes in and pins our knight to our king, and that gets really tricky. And also, if we if this pawn advances on this knight, then the knight's going down because there's this discovered check. Um, however, we have a counter tactic. We've got a fork on the board, and we've just got to check and see if it's going to be effective. Knight to a4 here looks really tasty, threatening queen and rook. And of course, the follow up is probably going to be d3 with the discovered check. However, the checking piece is the queen, and she's threatened. So we can just capture her. Um, and then if pawn takes with a fork on queen rook, well, we have a bishop to take care of that. And if rook takes, um, then we get a tempo to, to take this pawn. So I think this fork is going to work out. Let's test it. Oh, I didn't expect that. Hmm. What's the follow-up? I think we're just taking the rook. Um, because rook... Uh, knight takes rook, defends our bishop on c4. That was a clever response there by black. Nice. All right, here I wasn't really expecting a problem like this at the 1100 level. Uh, this is a mate and one. And it's a really, really good pattern to remember because it can come in a lot of different, uh, uh, a lot of different places on the board. It's called a dovetail pattern, and in a second you'll see why. Um, these two pieces here are forming the tail of the dove that is restricting the king from leaving this box. If I play queen right here. Notice if I put the queen right there, diagonal from the king, um, this three by three square is. This is all the squares where the king could possibly go. And when the queen's here, the only ones she doesn't cover are these two. And so when they're blocked by his own pieces, that's going to be checkmate. It could be two pawns. It could be, can't be two knights, obviously, because the knights would cover this square. But it could be a rook and a bishop or any other combination. So queen here is mate. Good pattern to remember. This problem looks like it's about figuring out what to do first, because uh, we've got two things going on. We've got a uh, got a rook we could pick up uh, with the bishop. Uh, we also have a counting issue right here, where it looks like bishop takes knight with a check, and if knight recaptures, then queen takes with a check. So we're winning a piece there. Um, so what do you do first? Uh, well, if we take the rook first, then the knight has an opportunity to save itself. Uh, if, however, we take this one it comes with a check, so this is a forcing move. And the follow-up comes with a check as well, so we get to do that. And then we can follow up and grab the rook. All right, number one thing I can't overstress in uh, looking for tactics is look at your opponent's loose pieces. 
I see two loose pieces right here that Black has just hanging out there. Nobody's defending them. That knight is loose. That rook is loose. And I have a queen. I can fork them both. Boom. Now let's grab a knight. This is one of my favorite uh, tactics. It's related to the pin back rank combination. Um, you can see that this this pawn is pinned here, and we always look for ways to exploit that. Uh, if bishop takes, uh, rook takes, then uh, rook here check, rook back queen takes. But the problem is, if bishop takes and rook doesn't take, and the king goes to h8, well then we have a problem. We've only one a pawn and our bishop is pinned and bad things happen. So the thing that you would instinctively not do, which is take with the queen, is the thing you should do. Queen takes f7 with a check. If the king goes in the corner, then queen takes f8 is mate. Therefore, the rook will have to take, but then when the rook takes, he's pinned. And when he's pinned, then rook to e8 is mate. It's a beautiful, beautiful tactic. Boom. That rook's pinned. So that's me. All right, this is an interesting problem here. I, the first thing I'm looking at is the queen threatening here, even though it's defended. Because I've got bishop holding on to f1, and so my rook could go there and potentially skewer the queen, and then we would checkmate. And if the queen tries to step out of the way, we're still taking that rook with a check, and it's going to lead to mate, so the queen is kind of forced to take the rook. Um, and if the bishop tries to block, well, that's not going to end well either, because I can just renew the threat with rook takes f3. And so if queen, if I play rook f1, queen takes f1, bishop takes f1, here's the problem. Rook takes f1 with the check, and my king goes to h2. And now what do I do? I'm a queen versus a rook and a bishop. In an, in an end game with an even number of pawns, I theoretically have a one pawn advantage, but I want much more than that. Out of a tactical position, I want to get more than that. So here's the thing. I think there are means by which I can fork the king and force him onto this diagonal. Forking him right here, forcing him onto this diagonal, which allows me to check him again here, forking the rook, and I'll bag the rook. So I think I'm winning even more than a pawn out of this position. Let's try it. So far, so good. King h2. What? That's a bad problem. You really got to see the follow-up to know that you're winning in that position. All right, this position, I'm looking at two things. I mean, first, it just looks like it's a counting issue. Um, bishop takes f4, knight takes f4, queen takes f4. And I think I've won a piece. Uh, is there any kind of follow-up from black that I have to be careful of? I don't see anything. The other thing I'm looking at is exploiting this pin. This pawn is pinned. So, you know, this knight can freely move to f5 if he wants to. But uh, is there any advantage or follow-up there? Uh, I'm threatening this square. What does it get me? I don't see any further tactics there. So I think I'm going to go for the counting. I think it's just a counting issue. Let's see. Did I get it right? Wow. Yeah, I would expect uh, for a 1,300-level problem, something more complicated than counting. But that's what we got. This is kind of complicated. I'm a little worried about this pawn promoting, but I do have my bishop here. But, of course, at any time, uh, white can simply capture the defender and promote the pawn if I'm not careful, but I think I'm winning this bishop if I play my cards right. This rook check, uh, king can of course choose from two squares to, to continue to defend the bishop. Um, he won't pick this one though, because rook e5 is mate. Not only do I check the king, I defend by the x-ray the pawn on the other side, and that pawn prevents escape here, and this pawn has this is square covered, so he won't go there, so he goes here, and then, but I think if, if uh, king f5, then rook e5 check, just deflects the king away. I grab the bishop, and if this pawn tries to proceed, 
um, I can get behind it and or I've got the bishop to cover it. So I think we're winning a bishop here. Let's grab it. And we get that bishop. Nice. Alright, this looks this looks interesting. This uh, rook, of course, should look too good to be true. There has to be something going on here. Uh, the last move was, you can always do this too. This is a good thing. What did Boyd do last? Helps you sometimes figure out what's going on. So he took a knight, and it looks like we're going to win the exchange there. But of course, this bishop has that square nailed down, and this rook aims to skewer and trap our queen. She actually has nowhere to go. And this rook is going to fall with a check, and bad things are going to happen. Uh, so if queen takes, rook skewers, queen takes, bishop takes, rook takes with a check, that's all beautiful. But uh, this first this first capture here does not come with a check, and so now my queen was defending this bishop, and I think this bishop can go down first. I think we're going to be in a bad spot there. So the tactic here that should jump out at you is called a Zwischenzug, or an Intermezzo. Zwischenzug is the German, Intermezzo is the Italian, and a lot of people just call it an in-between move, because that's what it is. Why don't I go ahead and trade this bishop off with a check, because it comes with a check, I can do that and not worry about my queen. And then I think we can follow up, and I think we'll have a one-pawn advantage when we're done, if I count correctly. Let's see what happens takes with the queen. I was a little worried about that because when this is all done I'm going to have to worry about this pawn. But I think I can follow up here. I think I have to capture here. I don't think I have anything else going on. My last capture is going to come with a check so I'll get to save that pawn. Cool. Okay, I think this is a great end game tactic called the Zugzwang. That's a, another German word. And uh, it basically means you're stuck with the move and you don't have any good moves. So uh, rook h7 would be mate with the opposition here if it weren't for the fact that the knight can interpose. So the knight will, because it must, play knight h6. Um, but then the knight's pinned. Knight's pinned to the king. And so if we could just make it black's move, the king would have to step away from the knight and we can grab it. And to do that, all we got to do is play king f6 here. Be careful, don't play king f4 because that allows the king to make a legal move, a king g6, and still defend the knight. So let's see if this is it. Boom. And if we go here, black is in Zugzwang, and we win the knight. So this, um, th that hanging pawn just, just, uh, Stands out like a sore thumb, but uh, uh, this comes with a check, and any follow-up we want to take with the queen, we have to be careful, because once we leave this file, this pawn's hanging with a check. So we've got to be careful, and rook check. King will not go to the back rank, because very, very bad things are in store for white if he does that. i got queen check here, i got queen mate there, if he goes there. Obviously, so the king is going here, and if the king goes there, I've got queen check. With the king probably trying to dance around this pawn to stay safe. King goes here. Uh, follow-ups, follow-ups. I've got a can't can't follow up with a pawn check because it's pinned. Um, queen check here. Queen to h4 checks the king, and if the queen blocks, I can. I don't have to trade. I can decline that and play queen check here. Uh, queen could block again, but uh, then then this pawn check would be a good distraction, and we'd win the queen. So I think we're going to end up chasing the queen around here, and end up maybe even just bagging this pawn. This pawn is a real pain, and this pin is is trouble. And all the threats with the bishop and the knight over here are scary. And I think maybe we can unravel all of that. We can unravel all of white's threats here, if not end up mating white. Let's try this. Okay, so I think I've got a hit with this queen check here. Okay. I got this check here. But this check 
This check brings me down with a threat on this pawn. Oh, that was it. I've been, I think we need a little more follow-up there to make sure that we're, we're winning that whole position. All right, I see a fork here, but it makes me nervous because at 1600, these should be starting to get harder, harder than a simple fork. Uh, hopefully you see it. Queen h3, forks, bishop, and rook. And they cannot defend each other. Mm, do we have any issues here? I should be aware of if bishop comes down to try to save itself. I could just take, take, take. Uh, I could take the rook with a check. I think this fork is it, but it just seems like it should be harder at this level. It should be harder than this fork. If I take, do I have any issues? I don't think we've got any issues. All right, this one, um, if, I, if I don't do the right thing, I'm getting mated in a couple of moves here with this threat of queen takes g7 and the threat of this pawn promotion. And this is just really bad for black. So, uh, you know, when you're under severe attack, trade off those queens if you can. I see two ways to trade off the queens. One of them I think loses. One of them I think is probably going to win because, uh, because of these two connected pawns here. If I play queen check here, um, queen takes, pawn takes, but then bishop takes, and if I take, I can't get back to stop this pawn. I am too far away. So I don't want to get my king sucked away from defending d8. So if instead I play queen eight six check, then queen takes, bishop takes, and now my king, even if he wants to push here, my king can come in and defend. I think we're going to be good, and I think we're going to win by getting one of these pawns promoted, hopefully. All right, let's see if I got that right. Ouch, no. We're going to have to go back and check that one later. I must have overlooked something. All right, let's see if I can rehabilitate myself here. This one, this one I'm nervous about because I think this one looks too, too simple to me. It looks like a capturing the defender for combination. Um, who's defending this bishop that knight? If I take, pawn takes or queen takes, and then I have queen check, forking the king and bishop, and I'm going to win the bishop. So the question is, is there any way to stop the check and save the bishop? Doesn't look like it. Um, looks like this at this level should be more complicated than that. Let's see. Nope. It's as simple as that. Capturing the defender, followed by a fork. All right, this one looks looks tough. Um, our queen's hanging. Um, got our bishop on a nice diagonal. Uh, Black's king's exposed. Um, so we definitely can't allow black to take our queen with a check. That, that's the end of the game. But if we take in king takes, I don't see any follow-up for us. Um, but um, here's an interesting idea. If I play knight take, or knight, not knight takes, knight h5 check, um, the king has to step away from the queen. It's a distraction, so I'd win the queen. So let's assume that uh, he doesn't step away from the queen, and the queen takes. Okay, well, we don't want to give away a knight for nothing. What can we get out of that? Knight h5, check, queen takes. But now the queen is no longer guarding this square, and our pawn supports us there. And we've got this queen check just attacking everything. Attacking knight and bishop and the rook on the x-ray. And if king goes here... Um, well, king will have to go there. We win the bishop with a check, but is the queen going to come in and block? That's the hard part. Uh, the queen comes in and blocks. Do we have a follow-up? Do we have a winning follow-up? We gave up a knight. We want a bishop. 
what are we really getting out of that deal? Um, queen blocks, queen takes with a check, and king moves over, and we can pile on this pawn. And so I think we're at least wanting a pawn out of the deal. I don't know. Let's try this. These are starting to get a little, a little more complicated. Yep. Here's my check. I'm taking the bishop. That was my plan. Queen blocks. I'm taking the pawn. Nice. We got it. This one almost looks uh, almost looks too simple here. Hoping I'm not overlooking something. Um, I like this fork, you know, bishop to c4 threatens this dangerous pawn and the rook. And uh, it looks like, okay, rook comes over to just pin my bishop to my king, and that bishop is going to go down. But the problem is I win the pawn with a check, not just a check, but mate. So is there probably what's going to happen is somehow black's going to try to give up the rook to stop the mate. Uh, but there's no way to do that. I think this is winning, just this fork right here. And we're stopping the mate by blocking this, this bishop. Uh, first thing I want to do is take the pawn with a check. And then... Boy, was I playing for a draw in this position? That's what you got to ask yourself in these tactical positions, because you can use them. You can use tactics to turn lost positions into draws. Um, if, I, if I take and king takes, it's drawn from insufficient material, obviously. Unless I've got some sort of follow-up. If I play bishop here, then the rook can just move out of the way, and if I play this check, then the then the king just moves. I'm playing this one for the draw. Hope I'm not right. I hope I'm right. Hope I'm not wrong. Yep, lost that one. Okay, we're gonna have to go back and look at that and see how uh, white white obviously must win in that position. It's very tough for me to see. All right, I'm not gonna lie here. I feel like I've had this position before. In puzzle rush and uh, the problem with that is that uh, as human beings uh, if we if we got it right we'll probably see it again if we got it wrong we'll be inclined to make the wrong move again and again and again unless we really learned from it and uh, that's why it's important to go back and look at these ones you got wrong uh, so that you can figure out how to not do that again um, I feel like I I feel like I was trying to threaten the knight here because obviously I can't take it with the king because then queen comes in with a check and I'm getting mated. It's very bad. Um, and so I think this rook move was, was bad. I feel like I've made that move before. And I feel like this pawn, I want to say this pawn supports me here and so I can skewer the queen and bag this rook. And if the queen steps aside, I can take the check. And, and then I've gotten the queen off this diagonal, and I can take that that knight. So I think, hopefully, hopefully I learned. Hopefully this is right. Bang. Um, I think I take with a check here. Got to be careful because, uh, you know, white is threatening mate there. Uh, I think. I think I can take this. If I take and king decides to pop up here, then what's my follow-up? That's a tough question. This is really sticky. Um, if I take and king goes here, that's the position I'm worried about. i got to calculate that. Um, 
queen, queen defends, uh, queen defends rook, queen defends this diagonal, but now queen hold, the white queen holds while rook takes, but rook is not a queen, and king to g7 is probably good. Now I'm threatening real bad stuff. Now I'm, so I think I can, I think I can do that. If he plays, if he plays king g2, I'm okay. He does not play king g2. And so now I'm just taking the knight. Nice. Well, this is a good problem. Uh, I'm threatening to promote. White is threatening to promote. Um, I, I like that my uh, my pawns here are side by side because that means they control one, two, three, four squares. And the king can't touch them. Uh, so I'm probably going to check here. Um, if king then goes here, then this pawn just marches right through. Check. And then promote uh, with a check. If he goes here, can I do the same thing? Check and promote. And if king goes here, I'm defending the bishop. And this is not an immediate promotion threat. Do I have a mate threat here? Am I being threatened with mate? No. No, knight covers this square. Okay. All right, let's try this. Um, I think this is going to work. And I can just want to make sure I get this right. If I play here, I'm promoting. And I got it. I didn't anticipate that move. Is it a problem? I think I'm just covering the green square. Good. All right, 1900. I almost don't believe this one. I'm concerned because I think if I take with the queen and pawn takes, then that clears this file. And rook here forks the bishops. Uh, can it be that simple? I got three pieces, three minor pieces. He's got three minor pieces. One, two, three, four, five pawns to his one, two, three, four, five, six pawns. So if I win a piece, uh, I'm winning. Uh, can't be that simple. All right, let's try it. We're up in the stratosphere for, for, for me anyway at 35. Let's see what we get. Is it that simple? Are you serious? Oh, that's the catch. So all I got to do is trade off that my loose bishop. And if I trade off my loose bishop, I'm all set. Wow. Okay, again, we're almost at 2,000, and I'm nervous that this is just a simple interference. You know, we got this knight in here, and if I push this pawn, not only does it come with a threat on the queen, but the queen can't take and continue to defend the knight, so the pawn takes, and then I win the knight. Um, and I'm up a piece. Is it that simple? Let's try it. I didn't anticipate that follow-up. And that is the catch, because if I take here, then I'm giving back the knight. But hold on. If I take, then black needs to use a tempo to capture the knight. Oh, but it comes with a check, so that's not a problem. So how do I fix the fact that my queen is threatened? Did not anticipate this. Um, this knight has a royal fork. <laughs> how convenient. And so I can take, take, if black declines to capture uh, my knight, then I can capture his knight. All right, I think, I think this knight gets to save himself with the tempo. Do I take here? No, let's take the queen. Nice. All right, my brain's starting to hurt. I don't know if I can get this one. Let's see what we got here. I'm looking at this pin on this pawn. Um, what if queen just steps right there and says I'm threatening mate in one? Um, white has ways to defend it, yes. Queen queen comes in just to defend. So I'm not sure if that's going to be effective. Unless we just pile on. Maybe take with the check. Queen takes... Uh, do we take with the bishop first? Bishop check, king king takes, rook comes in with check. 
man. Yeah, this just looks too easy if I play queen h3. I think the white queen just comes in. Pawn takes. I don't see anything winning there. And don't forget my knight or my rook is hanging over here. Uh, I think I gotta go ahead and take with the bishop. I don't have a lot of confidence on this one because if bishop takes, king takes, rook check. King could come down here and things could get really squirrely. Let's try it. And that's the end of that. Okay, let's go back and look at what we missed here on this problem. What did we miss? Oh, that's clever. We're threatening mate here and here. And, and the white queen can't defend both. And if the rook takes, then we've got this rook check back rank mate. That's why white gets crazy desperate. We take. Wow. That is a neat trick. I wish I'd seen that one. What else did we miss? We missed this one here. Okay, what did we do wrong on this one? Why isn't it letting me get into that one? Let me try that one again. What did we miss on this one? Won't let me check it out. Won't let me check the solution. Let's check this other one. Here we go. All right, what did we miss on this one? I was thinking that queen here forces a trade of queens. I didn't think this was good because I thought uh, queen takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, king takes, and then this pawn promotes. What did I miss? Let's see what happens. We have a zwish and zug. We have an in-between move where we get to capture that bishop that was a good tactic. Wow. Yeah, we're winning. Wow, that was a good one. I want to see if I can get into this one one more time. No, nope, not letting me solve that one. So, all right. Thanks, guys, for watching another round of Tactical Walkthrough. I uh, hope you learned something from it. I always uh, get a lot of good new ideas when I do these uh, chess.com puzzles. You should check them out.